we heard a great presentation about steel. Now let's talk about the future, which is aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, steel has uh, a great role in automotive, it's true. But if we check the facts and we see what's the trend towards 2025, we'll see that aluminum is gaining weight in the car while steel is losing. And this analysis can be expanded not only to cars, but all types of vehicles, including trucks. And if anybody from the audience is coming from the US, the next generation Ford F-150 pickup truck will have an aluminum body, not a steel body. Yeah? So why is that? Why is it so special around aluminum? Well, aluminum is recyclable. And it can be reprocessed as many times as we want. So it has that same property as steel, but it's much lighter. And it has that advantage against composites, which cannot keep this. Composites are not reprocessable as many times as aluminum. They are simply not possible to do that. Yeah? And what's happening with aluminum is not to talk about body or engine. Aluminum is gaining weight all over the car. We go to the powertrain, the engine blocks were before in iron, and now they are in aluminum. The turbo systems are made of aluminum. The injection pumps are made of aluminum. Most of the brackets of the engine and the pistons are made of aluminum. And the intake manifolds are also made in aluminum. But if we go to the chassis, the welded assemblies we used to see around steel, stamping steel are moving to aluminum, casting or forging by aluminum. And you can see that the knuckles, the wheel carriers, the control arms, or the nodes, or including the subframes for the engine, are made of aluminum to make the car lighter. Yeah? But also the brakes, either the calipers or the master cylinders, are made in aluminum. Or, of course, we see that from the outside, the wheels are now in aluminum. And they see, or they look much better than the old steel ones, right? But in the body, and it's not only about castings, it's also about stampings. The aluminum is gaining weight through stampings and castings also in the body. Yeah? Also for rear-driven vehicles, for the rear structure, and even in pedal boxes, we can find this. Yeah? So this is, a, I think, a good example. Some OEMs are ahead on this technology, of course, using their own technology and their supplier's technology. And if we compare an Audi A8, which is completely made of aluminum, has a 34% advantage in the body compared to a similar class 7 series, which is made of steel. So that means that we will save weight the car becomes lighter, and will have less emissions and consumption. But is that an only case for Audi? Well, the next generation of BMW will be using aluminum in all the moving parts of the body. And Mercedes-Benz is starting to do that now by the end of this year with the S-Class, which until now was made of steel, and from the end of this year will also have aluminum in the moving parts. So, of course, steel is not disappearing for the car. It will remain there, but it's losing presence, and the aluminum is gaining that presence because of the properties we mentioned. Yeah? Of course, one thing is to talk about materials. Another thing is to talk about processes and say, once we have chosen the material, how can we process that material in a sense that agrees or fulfills the approach of each type of vehicle. Sometimes we have sports cars with very low volumes. Sometimes we have sedans with low or middle volumes. And sometimes we have high volume cars. Yeah? So it's not only about 
if we are going to use aluminum or not, but how to process that aluminum. If we have a sports car like the R8, we don't have budget for tooling. So we will have to be using profiles. If we have a little bit more budget, we will be using castings. And if we have a lot of budget with big volumes, we will be including lots of stampings. So it's not only to consider what's the ideal material for each case, but also the process to use that material we've chosen. Maybe you say, well, but you are talking about Mercedes and Audi, but what's Volkswagen saying about this? And they also made this study, how can we surpass this Euro 6 and 7 expectations for 2020 and 25 about emissions? How can we reduce those 95 grams we are all talking about? Well, we need more aluminum. And you see that in the material mix that was studied through a golf platform, already 35% needs to be moved from steel to aluminum. Otherwise, we don't reach that target. Okay, so as I was saying, steel will stay there, <laughs> but aluminum is gaining share. Well, but we have also now electric vehicles, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, fuel cells. Well, aluminum is present in all these new applications. And if we see and we check what's the trend through all these years and what's coming new, either on the battery housing, on the e-drive, on the inverters, aluminum is everywhere. So now it's not just to say if the door or the hub or the wings are made of aluminum or not. All new applications to this electrification trend we are all experiencing will include aluminum as well. Uh, well, I did not come to present my company, but just to tell you that we believe on what we are saying now. We are expanding our aluminum division all over the world with plants in Europe, Eastern Europe, Russia, and America and we produce all types of components around aluminum. As I said, either on stampings or different types of castings, around the engine, around the transmission, around the chassis, steering. And we think that there is more space for new products. Even on rear axles we are producing for some big OEMs, we are moving from steel to aluminum. <coughs> or from sh some shock towers that are part of the body that until now were only made on steel, that's also moving to aluminum or some notes, yeah? So that was very briefly the potential we see around aluminum. Uh, as you have seen, there are examples around all segments of the industry and different OEMs around all the areas of the car and I will be very glad to explain or answer any question. Thank you. <laughs>